That's not only a good idea, it's a, a good choice, a wise choice of a new disciple is to choose a new disciple as large as possible, as practical as possible. So I would like, if I design a uh, bug the right converter, my goal, my aim, my uh, target is to design for a good disciple that is uh, around 80%. We will discuss uh, if uh, I'm going to 80, 85, 90 or 50 or whatever it is. But if I can choose, I go around 80%. For a few topics, for some topologies. Why? Because the larger is the duty cycle, the better is exploited the switch. So my switch co costs less. And having this degree of freedom, the ratio of my transformer and B and LNS or LNS or LNP, I can choose a convenient duty cycle and then adapt the voltages using MP or LNS. That is a possibility. Another possibility given by this extra degree of freedom, given by the third ratio that uh, allows me uh, the freedom to choose some velocities, uh, could be used this degree of freedom to move stresses around. I move stresses around, it means that if I see that one component is too much stressed, for voltage or current, I can move, I can decrease the stress on that component, but unfortunately, if I decrease the stress on the component, I will increase stresses somewhere else. I don't eliminate the stresses. I just move them to another place. Okay? So far so good? Those are basically the advantages of uh, having a uh, transformer. Isolation. Multiple outputs, no limitation of the output voltage versus the input voltage, and <coughs> this degree of freedom allows me to choose a reasonable, a convenient, a nice duty cycle, or this is one degree of freedom, so I cannot uh, accommodate for these two at the same time, or I can move the stresses around. For example, for high power systems, I can use the, my turn ratio, my transformer to uh, choose a, a good, uh, reasonable, uh, nice uh, cycle. For the AC adapters, on the other hand, your problem is the high voltage you have from the main, because the main is 230 volts, but it can go up uh, by at least 10 percent, so you have 250 volts, and uh, the peak value of these 250 volts uh, is around 350 volts. So if you have 350 volts at the input of your DC to DC converter, you fly that converter, and you don't want to buy a transform um, transistor that is a 1000 volt transistor. You can decrease the voltage stress of the input transistor, but you will have to pay some other price. If you decrease the input voltage uh, stress, you will increase the in output voltage stress. The diode will have a higher output voltage. That's okay. You decrease the voltage stress on a component, you increase the current stress to the same component. That's eh, okay. You just move stresses around. Those are the advantages. These are advantages. The weight. Eh? The weight. Weight. Cost. Let's call it cost. That means weight. Volume. Dollars, not euros, because you have to pay. It's an extra, it's an extra component. You add most of the time, it's an extra component you add to your uh, server. I have, uh, I have on my, I have on my desk, uh, my office, uh, two transformers. I forgot to bring them here just to show you what it is. Oh, I forgot one advantage. Uh, cost, weight, volume. Second disadvantage is difficult to design. I mean, it's difficult if you don't know how to design it. If you know how to design it, uh, you can do it. Uh, there are still problems, but it can be done. Another disadvantage is parasitic elements.
Parasitic evidence means, for example, losses. So your efficiency goes down a little bit because uh, your transformer loses, dissipates some power. P lost. You have some power that is lost inside the transformer. And more important, well, this is important as well, but another important fact is, for example, due to the uh, leakage inductances, that the limit the switching frequency. I showed you when you design a buck converter, your power, your frequency, switching frequency can, can go from a few kilohertz if you make, uh, if you are designing a few megawatts buck converter, up to megahertz if you are designing a few tens of watts uh, converter. One megahertz, two megahertz for small, small systems is okay. If you use a transformer, that means if you use one of those topologies, but plus a transformer, your frequency is limited by latency data in the transformer and uh, it's very hard to go above uh, a few hundred kilohertz. For example, one kilowatt, one kilowatt to one hundred kilohertz is the limit. More or less. Uh, something like because these leakage inductances will kill you. We will see in a moment what they are. The last disadvantage of having a transformer, of exploiting the good properties of a transformer, is related to the cross regulation. multiple outputs multiple output combat that means if you have a multiple output combat you would like to have the first output exactly at its water the second output at its water the third output at its water and so on but you can have that the voltages are not exactly right and if you change the load of one uh, output, you can have the other output that changes in voltage as well. And the more output you have, the worse this problem is. This is the reason why I told you, usually you don't find easily uh, converters with more than three or four outputs and voltages. Once I had a guy who asked me to design a flyback converter with nine outputs. And I told him, no, it's not going to work. I can't. And too much. And he told me, no, but hey, I really need it. Okay, but you know, it does not work. It cannot work. After a while, he came back and said, okay, I know that it does not work, but please design it this for me. And I asked, do you pay me even if it does not work? Yes. Okay, I designed it. And it worked. But uh, I was only lucky, it was a very specific application, so I was lucky, and with that I just uh, exhausted my luck uh, uh, quantity for all my life, so I designed one never again, because all my luck was used for that design. It was a very specific problem, there were not uh, two, two outputs that had to be very precise, the other one not uh, so, uh, so precise. So even if there is uh, some uh, cross-regulation problem, it was not an issue for some of uh, those out. So it worked, it was happy, etc., but uh, never again. I was not too happy with my design. Okay? Oh, I forgot one important uh, plus, one important advantage of it. Advantage is that being a high-frequency transporter, it has a size, it has a mass, weight, it is far less than a corresponding power transformer at 50 hertz. Uh, it is light and small compared 
to a 50 hertz and four. That is important. Transformer like this, why could be less than one kilogram, can handle two kilowatts. If you have to handle two kilowatts with a 50 hertz transformer, you have something that weighs about 20 kilograms. Classic question I ask uh, during the written theory part of your exam. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using a transformer in a current and a switch mode part of that? And you have to tell me this stuff. Isolation, multiple output, what else? No limitation on the output voltage with respect to the input voltage. One extra degree of, free, degree of freedom that means uh, I can move uh, stresses around, uh, I can uh, choose a duty cycle, I'm not forced to pick a duty cycle given by the ratio of the output voltage and the input voltage. And this advantage is uh, painting the net to design, uh, is, uh, has a uh, <coughs> leakage inductance, uh, uh, limitations on the switching frequency, cross regulation will not be very good. <laughs> to apply a transformer to our basic topologies. And the first basic topologies, topology we analyze is the buck boost. We will only analyze two of these buck boost and buck. Buck boost, that plus transformer gives me a flyback. Uh, please further notice that uh, once upon a time, a long time ago, a bug boost was named Friday, was called Friday. So if you find some old uh, document, textbooks or uh, papers, you can have the indication that a bug boost is named, it's called Friday. That is the old name. After the 70s, when uh, Dr. Chuk observed and discovered that a bug boost is not uh, Applied it, it's not, it was not a new topology, a different topology, it was just a bug plus a boost. The name became bug boost and the flyback is just a derivation of the bug boost. And uh, let's start from our bug boost to work. This is the bug boost to work. Do you remember how it works? There is a first uh, and then, first, the first operation we do is store energy into inductors. So the first phase is a charge, loading energy. Energy is stored inside inductors. And then, different uh, periods of time, separate periods of time, because this is an indirect converter. The second period of time, this energy is delivered yeah. So first you, you charge this and then you discharge it. First you charge the L and then you discharge the energy. And there are no kind of times where the input is directly, more or less directly connected to the output. All the energy is uh, transferred via the inductors. <coughs> I think I also gave you an idea, a hydraulic idea. Uh, a man with a bucket that goes to a tap, fills it to the bucket, throws it, goes to the other side, empties the, back, the bucket uh, to the tank or whatever it is, goes back, fills the bucket. Yeah, did I do it? Mm. Okay, first I store energy, then I release this energy. And this uh, stored energy and this released energy under what form? Is it? What kind of energy is it? Magnetic, magnetic energy. energy is uh, energy stored into the magnetic field 
of uh, Endeavour. So, nobody asks me to store energy and to release energy, to recover the energy from the magnetic field using the same wind. I can store energy with one winding and then can retrieve the energy with uh, a different winding. Did I wake you up? I'm sorry, I am talking, talking to you. Did you sleep well? You were sleeping a moment ago. Yeah. I'm sorry I have to lecture here, so I am taking you up. But next time, go somewhere else, please. It's just a matter of, uh, of uh, respect. Uh, nobody forces me, asks me to use the same wine, the same piece of wire, to store energy and to retrieve energy. I can store energy with one winding and I can retrieve energy with a different one. <coughs> so, I could put here a second <coughs> winding on the same core, on the same magnetic bar. These two windings are sharing the same magnetic path, the same core, the same magnetic core, the same... The same uh, Structure, magnetic structure, here. So I can store energy over here, and, can, and then when I open the switch, I can use the other winding, because the other winding sees the same magnetic field, and they use the second winding to move it uh, to the other. Uh, being two windings, two inductors, coupled together, I need to specify the dots. It is important. So I have to put a dot over here and a dot over here to say that these two windings are just uh, in parallel. When I put a positive on the, on the dot, I get a positive on the dot on the other side and so the dial is off. It's still an indirect converter because when I close the switch only the first winding is working, when I open the switch only the second winding is working. It's like uh, winding this inductor with a bike. Uh, two wires together, by final uh, winding, two wires together, and using one for storing, one for retrieving energy. Okay? So far so good. This stuff, <coughs> this object, is basically <coughs> one winding, another winding on a magnetic core. It looks very much like a A transformer. Well, this is not a transformer. Looks like a transformer, works like a transformer, works like a transformer, it's not a transformer. Not a, not a transformer. This is not a transformer. Why? Because in order to store energy, over here, I need, what do I need? I need an inductance. Transformers have an inductance, that is called magnetized inductance, LM. But the difference between a transformer and these two coupled inductors is that in a transformer, in a transformer, LM, must be as large as possible. Ideally, it should be infinity. In this object that looks like a transformer, but is not a transformer, the coupled inductors, Lm must be a very precise, precise value. Because it's excited, these uh, inductors is uh, stored and energy is uh, stored. You remember when we designed um, bug boost, we needed to know what inductors uh, to use. And here's the same story. And I also told you, if you remember, that if your bug boost uh, is shorter to deliver the maximum power, just remove one turn or two turns of your wine. Decrease the inductance, because if you decrease the inductance, you increase the energy that is inside your uh, inductance. You need a smaller magnetized inductance 
the, the value you want in order to be able to store enough energy. <coughs> so, this looks like a transformer, but those are two cost inductors. And the difference, the construction difference, is that in the transformer you have a magnetic path that is closed with the two windings or the N windings on top of it. But the magnetic path must be high permeability, high mu, and it must be closed, must be continuous. In uh, carbon inductors, you need to decrease the magnetizing inductance. That means either you use low mu material, instead of using ferrite that has a mu that is 2000, 3000, you use another uh, material that is called, uh, uh, usually it's called powder. It's just powder of iron and nickel and uh, something else inside a matrix of glue. And so you have many pieces of, uh, of uh, iron inside a matrix, a plastic matrix. And this is magnetic, but it's not complete, it's not full iron. It's just iron and some uh, air and uh, another grain of iron or uh, cobalt or nickel or whatever it is and uh, molybdenum. Molybdenum, yes and uh, another uh, space of uh, glue, of uh, plastic, and so on. So you have a, a, an equivalent uh, magnetic uh, um, coefficient, purity mu, that is not 2000, it could be 100, 50, 20, or so. Having a low permeability, magnetic permeability, you get uh, a lower inductance, so you can store energy. <coughs> That is the first difference, so the material. Instead of having ferrite, you use uh, powder, molybdenum, polypharm alloy, or something like this. The second way is that you use a standard, for example, E core, two pieces of ferrite that are uh, faced one to the other, but you leave some space, some gap, between the two halves. So, this air gap has a high reluctance, magnetic reluctance, and in this gap you can store energy. Energy is not stored in the magnetic material, it's stored in the air around the magnetic material. So, the, bit, the, the construction seen from outside is almost the same. Magnetic core and two windings. But the difference is either the material, this is not the right, 2000 of you, 3000 of you, but it's uh, uh, powder. It's a powder magnetic material inside a plastic system, a plastic uh, matrix, and so it can have uh, an equivalent to you that is uh, 100, 50, 20, 15, something like this, and so you can store energy here inside. Or you can have a line with a gap between the two halves, and um, this allows you to store energy. Please, don't call it transformer in a die bag, call it coupling inductors. So let's see what happens if we have a couple of inductors instead of a single inductor of our bottom floor. Meaningless question. 
the output is isolated and so who cares about the output sign? You can say that this is your zero or this is your zero. It's isolated. There are no relationships anymore with the input. What did I forget in this command? That will be my mantra for many lectures, many weeks. What did I forget? Dot. Dot. up. Dot up. And this, um, this system has a magnetizing inductance, a primal inductance, we call it primal inductance, inductance because it's not just an accident that happens to us. We want LP for a, by a, a, of a given uh, value. And we have a term ratio that is NP and NS. So we have one extra degree of freedom that we can use for our convenience. From this circuit, we can do a couple of changes. One is just cosmetics, just to uh, make it looking better. The other one is important. The important one is that this switch and this primary winding are connected in series. And most of the times, when you have two elements connected in series, you can swap them to the web. Please observe that in the original buck boost converter, inductor and switch were not in series. Because uh, there is very not the ones also at the time. But here there are those are the six. So I can <coughs> change their position and I get something like this. Should I put a dot over here? Sure, yes. Dot up and dot up. Is it still a flight of converter? Yes, sure. Is there any functional difference between these schematics and these schematics? No, they are the same. There is some practical, very important difference between these and this. No, yes. no side, uh, this is a low side switch. A low side switch is easier to this to the to Right than the high side switch. Every time I can move a switch to the low side, I'm very happy. This is a bug boost derived from bug boost, uh, the bug boost derived uh, converter. We can run it in, uh, we should run it in DCM most of the time. Most of the times, and can we control it both this mode or current mode or not? Oh, we can control it both this mode, that's fine, or current mode. If we want to control it current mode, where can we go to sense with measure? You can use another uh, coil on the transformer. We can use another coil on the transformer, yeah, well, maybe. We can use the transformer as a current transformer. Uh, no, because the current, <coughs> the suggestion is we can use another winding here in order to measure the current. Let's see. If I have a transformer on in or whatever I have, and I want to use it as a current transformer, I put a secondary winding and a very small resistance over here. Current transformer, ideally, is loaded with a short circuit. If I lost the distance further with the short circuit, the moment I close the switch, kaboom! But let's start to where position, section, where I can measure the inductor current. May, may I measure it over here? Something like this. 
I need to measure this thing. I have to sit on the right hand side of the branch when I cut it, I try to. I told them. So, I cannot measure all here, because here, I wait forever to get to the peak left. Peak does not come. I have to stay in the prime at the And a very convenient place to measure, it's not the most convenient, but a very convenient place to measure this uh, current is facing my arm, <coughs> just on the source of my uh, prime at the side just on the source of the switch. So the switch is low side, and I like it, and the sensing resistor is low side as well, even lower side, because it's just exactly on the ground. The maximum voltage across RS is one volt, maximum. So if I drive my, sorry, if I drive my MOS transistor, with a 10 volts or 12 volts uh, gate voltage with respect to the ground. Worst case, I get 10 volts right here, 1 volt on the source, and so I get 9 volts uh, VGS. 9 volts are more than enough to completely turn on my switch. So I am not losing any driving capability, I am not losing the fact that I uh, switch it on as a resistance. 10 volts, 12 volts on the gate, uh, one maximum volt on the source, I still have enough of voltage gate to source in order to switch it on completely. But that is a very good uh, position to measure the current, because this RS is going to refer to ground. I measure this voltage over here, I put here my RC filter, and I go to my control. All I can put here comes forward. Current transformer is not very used, current transformer in a flyer because it's a low power. And I have my measurement. If I have a current transformer over here, a current transformer can also place here on the positive side. Not in changes, but also. This is the first very important substantial change. I move the switch from high side to low side, very heavy. Uh, second, May I use the RDS or not the MOSFET in order to measure the current? <coughs> oh, that's a very interesting question. Question is, may I use the RDS on the MOS transistor to measure the current? That means when the switch is closed, it's a uh, resistance. So, to this resistance that is uh, ground referred, that is low side, there is a voltage drop. That depends on the car. May I use this voltage uh, to measure the car? Yes, I can. It is done in many integrated circuits. You cannot use it uh, for in discrete case, for discrete uh, circuit when you have an MOS that you buy it with the three pins, etc. Because the voltage over here changes a lot, and you don't know when it changes. Not very well. Not only, but you know, I'm not sure about uh, the RDS on your. And my transistor, and these are the on changes with the car. With the car, with the car. The big changes with the voltage, the VDS. Yes. With VDS, a little bit changes with more important, most important temperature. When it's cold or it's hot, the RDS on can be multiplied by can increase by a factor of 1.5, 1.7, 2, something like this. So. That is important. But if you are inside an integrated circuit, you can sense the temperature of your silicon. You can, you know, when you open the switch, so you can disconnect the, the sense amplifier in order to avoid the saturation, and so it can be done. In an integrated circuit, this is done in uh, discrete. It's very hard because you have to use here a sense amplifier, an amplifier that senses. A few hundred millivolts, that is what you want to measure. And when the switch opens, you ha can have here 600 volts. Yeah, could be half. Good question. Thank you. Last uh, change we do our private schematics is not an important change, it's just a cosmetic change, it's just to have it to be better. And it's something like this. Possibly RS, but only if you are in current mode, if you are in mode as mode, I put it. 
input capacitance instead of having the diameter pointing to the left having a negative positive voltage and the voltage is so negative positive like this I want but <coughs> a cosmetic change I want an output voltage that has the positive because it's we are used to have positive voltage above and negative voltage below. It's just a simple thing. So in order to exchange, to swap the, the polarity, the output, they need to work to involve the dial position like this. And if I do this, what I also should do. Switch the inductor uh, inductor upside down. And instead of uh, drawing the, the, the inductor upside down, I don't know how to do, dot up, dot down. And this will be the standard schematics that we will use in this class for flyback from Earth. We have to find here LP, the primary inductance, and we have to find here NP and NS. If you want to find out an LS, that's okay, it's the same story. The negative inductance can be seen on the primary side or on the secondary side. It's the same, it does not change anything. It. Uh, it's more convenient to have it on the, on the primary side. But if you really want LS equals LP times the term ratio and S over NP squared. Well, our design will be Finding out the stern ratio or the ratios if uh, we have multiple outputs and LP. And let us take a minute break. <coughs> <coughs>